Orson brings up a good point about um, Dr. Kushner, who was in South Vietnam. And he didn't think this was a big problem. He was a flight surgeon, so he figured that, as his, you know, all his instructors told him, he could show his doctor card, and they were gonna, they, were, they would let him go because he was a doctor, or be nice to him. And apparently, that wasn't the case. So tell us a little bit about take, being taken into captivity in the South versus the North. Well, my story is a little, little bit more prosaic. I didn't have the thrill of punching out of a high-speed jet aircraft. I was flying in a, uh, a Huey, and it was terrible weather, and it was uh, at night, and wind and rain, and we were on a very routine mission. And I thought we were lost. And I said to the pilot, who I knew well, I think we've flown west of the highway. So he, um, he asked the radar operator at Duck Fo to find him. He squawked his transponder ident, and um, the radar guy said, uh, he said, uh, the radar is off. You want me to turn it on and let it, it has to warm up and find you. And the pilot said, Raj. And that was the last word that he ever spoke. And then instead of having the thrill of parachuting down and being serene, the next thing I knew, I was hanging upside down in a burning helicopter, and the pilot was killed, and the co-pilot, uh, was his seat failed, and he was thrown out of the helicopter with a broken leg, sticking, the bones were sticking through his jungle boot. The crew chief was unconscious, and I uh, lost seven teeth and had a broken collarbone, broken left arm, and uh, the helicopter burned up and M60 rounds cooked off and several went through my left shoulder. So the, at first light, we sent the crew chief for help and I sat with the co-pilot. I just sat there because we had no supplies. It was pouring rain for three days and three nights and on the day, the third day, the co-pilot died. I had splinted his leg with tree branches and, and an army belt and the crew chief never came back. Six years later, my commander told me he had been found 10 miles from the crash site, uh, shot and submerged in a rice paddy. So I struck out and um, this is after three days of capture and I was burned and wounded and didn't have any glasses. And I saw, after I got down to the bottom of the mountain, I saw a peasant working in the rice field and he, he came up and took me to his hooch about a mile down the road and gave me a can of sweetened condensed milk. And I had my arm uh, strapped to my body with my belt because I had this broken collarbone and shot through the shoulder. And a squad of VC came up and said, surrender, no kill. And I put my one arm up and the squad leader shot me through the neck. He was, I think he was more frightened than I was. I was kind of in shock. And so they captured me and tied me uh, very tightly with uh, combo wire and then marched me 30 days, mostly at night, with no boots, to what we call Camp One. And my first words when the helicopter crashed, I'll, I remember them very well, was, is anybody alive? And I didn't know whether I was alive. I, I just didn't know, so that was my first experience.